the female in the middle there, that big fat one there. Uh -huh. All the males are desperately trying to get on top of her. You know how it is. Hey guys, my name's Olga, and welcome to Beastie Feasts. There's a few different species. We've got there's some Egyptian blaps beetles. We've actually got a lot of them. They just like to hide <laughs> all together in a giant cluster. So, so they've got uh, an interesting little defense. Most darkling beetles do. They'll actually raise their bums into the air if they're upset, and they'll spray you with a chemical they've got in the in the rear there. Oh, uh, also got these little guys who are super worm beetles. So their larva is actually used to feed a whole bunch of reptiles. People use it to feed mammals and things around the world as well. They got some biscuits. They got some veggies. This one's actually munching on some uh, some squash right now. And you can see just underneath. We've got some larvae. So this is a blaps larva. Really blooming. Yeah. So this is a superworm larva. You can see they, they almost look like worms, but they're actually baby beetles. Um, and then we've got some blaps larvae in there as well. And, like that. I forgot to mention that they do have a little red solo cup in there. It's actually full of uh, water crystals. Mmm, oh, gross. So uh, that's just so that they can drink but not drown in their water source because they're not particularly smart. Um, are they not... usually from a desert environment? Or... They are. So these guys are also referred to Egyptian uh, as Egyptian black beetles, but uh, they're almost never found there these days. They're uh, all over the world. They've become naturalized everywhere. Um, so the area that they were originally from is no longer their exclusive home. They do so well in all the places where humans have brought them. That uh, Why do they always ball together? Um, because there's a female in the middle there. That big fat one there. Uh -huh. All the males are desperately trying to get on top of her. You know how it is. Also, there's a there's good defense in being in a in a tight group. If you're in the middle of a ball of friends, you're less likely to be the one that's be picked out by a predator. The iconic Aussie huntsman. As the name implies, these guys are incredible hunters. Although their eyesight isn't fantastic, they have another extraordinary ability that makes up for it. Their entire bodies are covered in extremely long, stiff hairs called trichobothria. These hairs are so sensitive to vibration that the spider does not even need to see its prey to know exactly where it is. In fact, many huntsmen are more active at night, taking advantage of the cover of darkness to hide from their own predators. They move across the canopy and along the trunks of trees, looking for a spot where their camouflage will allow them to disappear completely. They can find the most opportune spots to set up ambush by sniffing out invisible highways where prey items often travel. Specialised hairs on the feet and around the mouth parts help the huntsman taste the surface as it travels over it. And man, can they travel! Long legs are a great advantage, propelling some species over a metre per second at top speed. For you yanks out there, that translates to about three feet a second. It's pretty darn fast. It's no surprise that when you're that fast, the chase doesn't last long. In fact, it's over in an instant. Although their bite has very little effect on a human, on their much smaller prey, 
it's still fairly lethal. It'll take this cricket a while to stop struggling, but what it doesn't realise is escape is impossible and death is certainly on its way. Meanwhile, the huntsman makes sure that its prey can't struggle free by using its legs, its fangs, and also the modified front legs around the mouth, the pedipalps, to help keep the prey restrained. Now, as you may know, pedipalps also serve to transfer sperm to the female during mating. This bloke's uh, swollen appendages mean that he is certainly a male. Now, the inward pointing fangs mark the huntsman as an arenomorph, which is very different to the primitive mygalomorph tarantulas we met last episode. The arenomorphs are usually extraordinary web builders, but the huntsmen have evolved in an entirely different direction. Their incredible speed and sensitivity make these guys unrivaled wandering ambush traps. We've got a little centipede that that I actually bred a couple of years back. So he's made a little home for himself down the bottom. So it's a Australian giant centipede. Obviously he's not giant yet. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please like and subscribe. Uh, the more followers we get, the more likely we are to put in more episodes. Please tell us in the comments what you want to see next.